Today we are going to talk about a very useful feature that uh, many of you may not know about or if you know about it uh, you may have uh, never or hardly used it. Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be all about the pop-up palette. This is a feature that will allow you to access your most often used tools in the interface. Let's get started. To access the pop-up palette, use your right mouse button and click anywhere on the canvas. To close it, right-click again. Also know that it will automatically close as soon as you choose a brush. As you can see, I cannot move the palette, so how do I move it where I want it to go? There is a trick. First, before to open the palette, you must decide where you want it to be. Position your cursor on a specific spot on your canvas and then right-click. The palette will lay exactly at the position you chose. So just remember this, wherever your cursor is located on the canvas, the pop-up palette will appear in that exact same spot. Let's uh, customize the palette. Uh, go to uh, Settings, select uh, Configure Krita. Click on the tab Pop-up Palette. To increase or decrease its size, move this slider or use the arrows located on the side of the sliders box. Right now the palette is set to a default size of 385 pixels. Let's see how it will look like when I set it to its maximum size. Click OK. This size is obviously too big, so let's get back to the configuration panel. This time let's try another size. Click OK. I think uh, that will be fine for me. Let's make more changes. Here you can decide how many brushes you want to be displayed. You can add a minimum of one brush. Or a maximum of 45. I'll set mine to 12. You can change what type of color selector you want to use. Just click on the arrow to open the drop-down menu. We are only given two choices, sRGB and a wide gamut selector. I believe the word gamut translates to spectrum, but please correct me if I'm wrong. In this case, it would mean that it will display a wider range of colors than the sRGB option. So since I am a cartoonist and I use simple colors, I'll leave this to the sRGB option. Use this slider to change how big the color selector is. As you can see, 100 pixels is too small and 240 pixels is too big. So I'll set all for a size that is somewhere in the middle. Finally, you can decide if you want the color history ring and the rotation ring activated. I think it's a good idea to leave those options on. So we are done here. Play with the different settings and see what works best for you. As usual, if you are not happy with what you have tried, you can always click here to restore the default setting.
time to talk about how this uh, pop-up palette works. The color selector that you see here is the same one that we have in the advanced uh, color selector docker. They are connected, meaning that whatever I do here will happen there. This ring is your color history. It will act like the one in the advanced uh, color selector docker. You can clear the history by using this button. Please note that the color history only clears in the pop-up palette. Uh, if you look closely, you will see that the color history remains in the advanced color selector docker. The two bubbles that you see at the top of the outer ring are your background and the foreground colors. Just click on the color that you want to use. You can also use the X key on your keyboard to switch between the two. Use this slider to zoom in and out. Drag this button to rotate the canvas. To realign the canvas to its straight position, drag the button to that exact location. You can also hit the number 5 on your keyboard, that's the shortcut. Click on this button to get to the canvas only mode. Click again on the button to get back to the normal mode. As a reminder, you can do the same thing by clicking on the tab button on your keyboard. Finally, here is the mirror feature. Or use the shortcut M on your keyboard. Now, right now we have a set of uh, brushes in the uh, pop-up palette, but you can always change what you have inside by clicking on this tag. Now just uh, scroll and choose uh, which set of brushes you want to see in your pop-up palette. This up arrow will close this lower section. This arrow will allow you to customize the common brush options. So let's try it. You can click here to add or remove options. Obviously click first to select the option you want to add or remove. and use the arrows to move the options from one side to the other. For example, here I could add the flow, but I would remove the angle. This refresh button will reload the brush preset. Now click again on the arrow to close the panel. Let me show you very quickly how to set up your pen. We'll start with my Wacom stylus. First things first, make sure that your device is selected. In my case, since I have only one Wacom tablet, my Wacom Intuos Pro has been automatically selected. In the tool selection, select your pen. In the application section, select Krita. I want the lower button of my pen to act as my mouse right button. Click on the arrow located beside the word Disabled. Select Clicks. Now select Right Click. And you are done. It is that simple. Let's configure another pen. This is my Canvas Pro 16 tablet. We are going to configure the pen as well. Click on Digital Pen. 
make sure that the application Krita has been selected. Right now, none of the two buttons have been programmed. We are going to set up the bottom one, just like we did earlier with the Wacom pen. So click on the button, choose mouse key, and here select mouse right button. And you are done! So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll see you next time with a new quick tip. Until then, have a great week.